All right, um, so with that great fun, um, I'm here to talk to you today about um, packaging OpenCast for Debian. Um, just gonna dive into a little history first, and then I'm gonna talk about the actual packaging itself, although there's not a ton to talk about because quite frankly, it's right before lunch and I'm sure everyone's a little sleepy, and I don't want you all to be completely unconscious by the end of the talk. So, um, some, some background. Um, OpenCast, as you all well know, is very complicated to build. There's a lot of dependencies and a lot of just stuff that you have to do. And the documentation is iffy in lots of places. And lots of institutions don't want to build it themselves, and I completely understand that. If I was an adopter coming into the project now, I wouldn't want to build it myself either. I'd want an RPM, I'd want a deb, I'd want whatever the other versions of Linux use. Um, so we, right, we tried making some binary distributions in the past. So prior to 1.0, this is like the 0 0.05, 0 0.08, or 0.5, 0 0.8 era, we actually distributed whole VMs. These are a giant VMDK file that was tarballed up and required VMware to run. There were a few institutions that were actually brave enough to download this thing and run it, which was interesting because in theory they could have contained whatever we wanted them to contain. Um, but that was never a problem, thankfully. So there wasn't a lot of usage there. I mean, it would have been nice if, had people been able to use that, but it, it's not really usable to distribute a huge file. A huge file like that, sorry. So post 1.0, we tried to distribute tarballs, basically just take the built version of OpenCast, tarball it up, and then you can decompress it and run. And as far as I know, no one actually tried these things. We built them but checking the access logs, because of course they're hosted on the U of S servers, I don't remember ever seeing anyone actually download this thing aside from robots. So I don't think that that really helped. I think a lot of institutions at this point either had decided that they were going to build it on their own or were just going to sit there and wait. So thankfully, Lars at one point began shipping RPMs and that's sort of been the state of things um, pretty quickly People were using RPMs, everyone was switching to CentOS or Red Hat based distributions, and usage as far as I can tell, from, and I mean Lars, um, Lars gave that talk where he described the, the pretty much exponential usage, it pretty quickly took off. But the Debian distros were left in the dust. There were a lot of people who were coming on list occasionally and saying, you know, hey, where, how can I get the Debian version of this? And the answer was, go install Red Hat. And I mean, that's, that is an answer, but it's not a nice answer. I mean, I personally strongly dislike RPMs, but that's a personal thing. And so I've always been having to build it from source. So starting in 2.1, 2.2, I'm building DEBs right now against 2.1. They don't actually work yet, but they're going to work. I'm very close. I suspect that I won't get them finished before 2.2, so don't hold me to 2.1 Debian distributions, but for 2.2 for sure there will be RP or devs. Um, one thing to keep in mind though, I've never packaged anything before, um, and packaging appears to be more of an art than a skill, um, so I would not be surprised if there's bugs. I'm doing this for the first time, and it's an art. I it really wouldn't surprise me if these don't work very well initially. Um, and I imagine that going between 2.2 and 2.3, the upgrade will not be seamless, where, you know, in theory with the RPMs, it mostly is. So I would not use these immediately for production, but if you're interested in Debian packaging, please, please give them a test, because we need this as a project, and I can test them. I can say, yeah, they work for me, but until somebody actually tries to use these in a more serious system in a way that's going to last for more than 24 hours, we can't really be sure that they're going to be stable long term. So right now there's a few issues. Um, I'll get into the actual Debian packaging themselves, uh, the Debian packages themselves in a bit here. But there's a few common issues between the RPMs and the DEBs that I think as I'm building these, I'm coming across them and thinking, how should I approach this? And I don't. I mean, I know, how, I know how the RPMs do it, and I know how I would probably do it, and I don't always agree that we're approaching these the same way. So there's the dependencies, obviously. That's pretty simple. 
hosting and licensing is always going to be fun. Um, thankfully, it sounds like Osnabrück is going to be pa uh, hosting the package repositories, which makes life a lot easier. And then we come to configuration. Um, so with the RPMs, it installs and you have to configure it yourself, and that's fine. That's what the Debian packages are doing right now. When I install something like MySQL, I get some script that runs after the install that says, how, please set your root password for your database. I think we could do something like that for some very basic configurations for OpenCast because I don't know about you guys, but I've ended up with broken systems before, all the time. And I'm, I've been around forever. I've been here since the beginning of the project, and I configure things wrong sometimes. I can only imagine as a new adopter, it's gotta be completely insane. So I think we should find some way of standardizing some of the basic, like I'm not talking setting up solar instances somewhere else and hooking that up, but some, something simple like the server URL. I think that could be packaged pretty easily. Um, so going long term, um, this is sort of a Debian thing. I don't know. I don't know very much about Red Hat, to be fair. But in Debian, there's the concept of a configuration package, which basically is your config files wrapped up as a Debian package, and then you install it, and it just dumps them over top. I think that would work well. Um, I think package post install scripts work well as well. Or we could do something like Ansible, which, I mean, I'm very familiar with Ansible. I actually quite like it, and I'm totally okay with going that way. I just sort of want to, I want the community to come to some kind of consensus even if it's just a loose consensus, with some basic, so, basic setup tools. Because you know, your new adopter isn't going to be able to know what org.opencast.server.url should be set to. And I guess this, this talk is both a talk about these packages and a talk about how we should, talk, how, how we should work together and I don't know what venue would be best for that. I don't know if it's best to bring that up on list or if we want to talk about that here. I don't really know what time, much time I'm going to have. Maybe we don't have time to talk about that. Um, so anyway, keep that in mind. Um, if we don't manage to talk about it here, I'll bring it up on list because I think it's really important and I think long term the project is going to suffer without some kind of basic setup tool. So. Um, for those of you who aren't really interested in the bowels of how the OpenCast configuration files work, please feel free to not pay attention at this point. Yeah, <laughs> um, I totally can understand not particularly caring about this. I, it's definitely very developer focused. So with that in mind, um, who here knows what Carafe is? Okay, who here knows what Felix is? Okay. so. Carafe replaced Felix. Felix was the runtime. OpenCast is a bunch of Java files that in and of themselves don't know how to be a server. Jav or Felix slash Carafe provides the how to be a server part and then we hook into that and use that to actually power our REST endpoint. Ah, sorry, REST endpoints and the ability to run things in the background, things like that. So Carafe replaced Felix. Felix had a certain directory structure and our configuration files were under etc, so etc slash services, etc slash load, etc slash config.properties, probably most people know what that is. Um, those things, some of them have been moved around with the introduction of Carafe, so etc services and etc load are actually now just straight under etc, which means there's a whole bunch more files in there and it seems really confusing until you realize those files were all actually there before, they were just in a different directory. Um, most of these files, most of the files in ETC are Carafe specific. These are things that aren't OpenCast related. You can mess around with them, but they're probably not something that you want to mess around with. I would just leave them alone. Um, the easiest way to tell whether it's a Carafe file or not is if the file name begins with org.opencastproject, chances are it's one of ours. Org.apache is probably safe. The other ones I would just leave alone. Um, for those who are looking for etc slash config.properties, that one is now called etc slash custom.properties, and it has a few other bits in it that weren't there before, but 
it's still the ba same basic file underneath. You just have to page through it a little bit. And then there's this weird file called etc.org.apache.craft.features. What, what is this? Why, why are we caring? Why is he talking about this? Do you remember building profiles? Maven-p and then admin, comma, dist, comma, service registry, comma, worker-stub, or, or I think that was the admin profile. And that's the problem. I don't remember what that profile was. I'm a developer, and I don't remember how to build the admin node. We've gone away from that. Now profiles, which are named features in Carafe, are built as tarballs. So when you run Maven, you just Maven clean install, and it does the full install. It builds all of the profiles, and builds a bunch of tarballs for you so that you can just take that tarball and install it somewhere. It's more difficult to get custom configurations. So if you want, say, a admin worker combination, you're gonna have to build that yourself, but you only have to build it once because you'll build it as a new profile, and then every time you build, it will get built along with everything else. Distributions are found in the build directory after you run Maven clean, like Maven clean install, and then it'll crank away for a while, and you'll get a build directory underneath your, the, the root of the build with a bunch of tarballs that are, you know, opencast dash dist dash admin or admin dash dist, whatever. One of the two. A distribution is a profile, is a feature. I think these are actually decoupled, but I think the way that we're using them, it's basically one-to-one. -one. That's what it appears to be. And that's where you'd actually go in to actually add a new feature or profile or distribution. It would be under the assemblies directory. If you go in that directory, you'll see the different distributions that are going to come out in your build directory. Okay, so why did I go and tell you about this? <laughs> That's a good question. That's because the RPMs and the, and the Debian packages are packaged a little bit differently. The RPMs are packaged exactly the same way as they're built. So inside that build directory, you've got, I think, four tarballs right now, and each one it gets turned into an RPM. The way I've built it is basically I'm dumping them all out into one big directory, combining the jar files, and then building a single file into each of the distribution packages. So the RPMs, when you install the admin node, you get, I don't remember, I think it's like 300 megs worth of download for the admin profile. If you were then to install the engage profile as well, you're downloading about 300 meg again. With the Debian files, you're downloading, I think, about 350 or so, but then switching if, for some reason, you want to install both different, multiple different profiles, rather. It's almost seamless, because the only difference between each profile is one file. So the admin nodes package is just one file. The engage nodes profile is just one file. And they all depend on a single larger file switching between them, or for example, if you're deploying a cluster, deploying a whole cluster means that you're pulling down one large file and then distributing it out instead of a whole bunch of large files. It's slightly, it's just a different way of packaging. I think it makes more sense to me, but there isn't a right or a wrong answer. I'm just choosing to do it that way. It will be functionally identical, but if you're looking at your download logs, that's why it looks different. And yeah, I guess that was, that was about it. I kind of figured that no one would actually be here. It's almost the last talk, and um, it's just before lunch, so I figured everyone would either be asleep or gone. Um, but I'd like to put out another call for testers because this is, this is going to be something that I'm planning on doing for the long term, and I think that for Debian operating systems, it makes a lot of sense to have packages. So anybody who's interested in testing, please get in touch, either on list or here, and, uh, or just directly to me, like if you don't feel comfortable contacting people on list, that's totally fine. And yeah, any comments, suggestions, criticism, like I, I'm doing this because I think the project needs it, and not because I feel strongly that I know what I'm doing, so if there are any comments, criticisms, concerns, Suggestions, please let I have, me know. I have a question, sure. surprisingly. You, you might remember that uh, at the beginning of the conference I showed this uh, quote from the report. You, you must remember as well that uh, it 
takes resources yep. uh, in order to, to work with, with uh, open source in general and maybe open craft in particular. Do you think this is a, a way to remedy that, uh, at least for, for medium-sized institutions in particular? Yes, I think so. That's sort of my goal, is medium and small-sized institu institutions. Anyone who's big enough will have a developer on staff who can figure out how to build OpenCast. They might not like it, but they can figure it out. A small institution, like a few that I've actually been contacted by off-list that don't have any technical people, would have very little chance of installing OpenCast without some kind of support or without some kind of automated tool to do the installation. And this is one of the tools, for sure. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is Lars, if anyone doesn't know. Don't worry, I just uh, made some mental notes during your talk and uh, I just want to add one a few points. Um, first of all, you said that uh, uh, RPM packages are just doing it a different way and uh, I saw what you're doing, I really like it. The RPM packages will probably switch to that with OpenCast 2.2 as well. Uh, I didn't just want to change it uh, the way things are packages during one release. Uh, I'll wait for the next release to do that. But uh, I think it makes sense and it's a nice way to do that. And even actually you only have to change one line in this configuration file. So uh, maybe we will, could even make this pub a, bit, a little bit more known so that people easily can switch what they are actually running. Um, Another thing is the initial installation script you're talking about. Um, we actually had that idea on the list for the Google Sum of Code project, uh, which we didn't start. <laughs> um, I think it's a nice idea, though uh, there are some differences between the packaging for Debian and the packaging for Red Hat. Uh, the thing is, you in theory still have the same post installation scripts and so on uh, you have in Debian. And theoretically, you can still do everything in there. And the thing is that it doesn't really matter which uh, packaging guideline for uh, RPM based systems you take. Uh, they all state that uh, RPMs have to be installed without user interaction. Okay. And so, you can't bring it in there, but you could then have uh, install this and for your configuration you could run this uh, uh, program we also package. So that would be entirely possible and would bring things closer. And as I said, uh, I think it makes sense to have such a script. Um, for the hosting part, yes, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, for the domain, we actually got uh, packages.opencast.org already registered for a common repository. Um, and for the rest, I'll talk to you later. Fair enough. Any other, oh, Stuart, okay. Hey, so it's just a comment rather than a question, but I just wanted to thank you for doing this and for Lars's work before this. I think um, when I was a new adopter and I had one capture agent and it was only me working on it, I put a week into getting OpenCast to run. And it did work at the end of that week, but I wonder how many institutions there are out there that put a week in, they never got it to work, and then they just abandoned hope. So yeah, um, if we can um, find some time to help do some testing, then we will. Yep, that would be awesome. So while the microphone's making its way across. Um, I like the idea of that post-installation script and personally I think Ansible makes a lot of sense or something like that, whether it's Ansible Chef, I don't really care. Um, my only problem with that is that it introduces additional dependencies. That's sort of why I like the idea of the package-based script. It's a post-installation script, it's packaged in there, it just runs in bash, but I, if the RPMs say that to not do that, then I don't think we should do that. I think we should stick to well-known guidelines. Oh, so it has to be run by hand. Okay, okay. 
Sorry, James, go ahead. It's okay, it's, it's a very trivial question, really. Um, I take it, are the, deb fi the, the um, Debian packaging files within being committed back into the Opencast repository, or are they going to be in a separate? They're going to be in a separate repository. Um, one of the things, so I personally like Debian packaging better. I just don't particularly like RPMs. But my major criticism so far is that the directory structure that you have to have to do Debian packaging is hellish, and it's completely inappropriate to be recommitted back into the upstream. So I think I'll probably keep them in a separate repo, just the same way that the RPM scripts are kept in a separate I, repo. I, I, I only did one to three. The other thing is the useful thing about dev files. Well, I would also, you know, as well as installing it yourself, is if you, even if you're building from source yourself, for deployment purposes, we you know, we build a monolithic RPM and deploy that and stuff. But be you know we want to build monolithic Debian files and deploy them if we're if we're running on Ubuntu and stuff, even if we're building our own version kind of thing. So I, I mean I'd I'd love to have those stuff inside the repository so we don't have to have two repositories. Uh, but but yeah, there's I understand there are issues because I I did it for Ga our Galacasta so we could deploy our version of Galacasta. Yeah. So I went for that pain to <laughs> destroy a little little program. Yeah, it's it's not that they can't be overlaid. I just feel like if I did overlay them, it would really muck up the look of the repository and confuse people. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.